Hi, I'm Billy Mitchell with FedScoop TV. Today I'm here with Ron Rowe, the assistant to the special agent in charge in the Criminal Investigative Division of the U.S. Secret Service. How are you, Ron? I'm well, thank you. Great to have you here today. So today we're talking a little bit about cybersecurity, and we're going to jump right into the cloud. Um, and specifically, as people want to move closer and closer towards the cloud um, and be innovative within that, how is it possible to continue to secure that? So it's a challenge, uh, and I think uh, the, there are excellent uses of the cloud. Uh, it, it, the storage capacity, the expense, it is certainly a, a game-changing cost savings to private sector and government. Um, I think what is a concern um, from a law enforcement perspective um, is that any time you start putting services out to third parties, you're increasing your attack surface. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think that that's a consideration that, uh, and I understand that oftentimes expense usually trumps security <laughs> concerns. Uh, but it's just something that uh, as decision makers, uh, as they're weighing these options, they just need to be aware of that. That you know, anytime you're putting a third party in control of your information, your data, um, you are giving up a little bit of control. Now sometimes they may have a more robust security apparatus than what you're able or what you're capable of fielding. Mm -hmm. So that's just one concern. The other thing I would just point out is that, again, because you're dealing with a third party, there are unintended consequences if there's a malicious insider, if there's somebody who perhaps doesn't have a grudge against you as the customer, but maybe is um, not happy with their employer. And then, you know, as they're walking out the door, they do something malicious to the data. So that that's always a risk. but. Uh, you, you cannot deny that, that cloud services and the storage um, is such a, uh, a huge cost savings. Absolutely. Um, so moving on, uh, one of the biggest challenges for security officers today is the explosion of mobile cloud, as we just spoke about Internet of Things, is making things uh, less complex, reducing the complexity. Um, but, you know, as you want to keep innovative and secure, uh, it kind of doesn't go hand in hand with that reduction of complexity. So how do you manage that? Uh, you just have to have a good uh, frontline uh, security. So, you know, two-factor authentication. Um, you know, with, with the Internet of Things and bring your own device, these are all things that IT professionals have to consider. You, you have to, there's a certain level of uh, security that you're going to give up with accessibility. Sure. And today's, the demands of, of uh, not only businesses and government to deliver services to constituents and customers, uh, it requires being accessible on all your devices. Mm -hmm. So I would just say it's a challenge, um, but I think if you can put things like two-factor authentication uh, and then make sure that you do have uh, you know, some kind of monitoring of your system so that if you do see some anomalous activity from somebody, um, that at least uh, there's some kind of uh, verification or that somebody's checking. Uh, if somebody's account is all of a sudden being active at 2 o'clock in the morning and that's really kind of outside <laughs> of their pattern of yeah. life, that's something that, that, that the IT uh, folks uh, should probably consult with security and say, hey, we, we see some anomalous activity. Sure, sure. So there's been no shortage of uh, cybersecurity in the news recently, especially towards the end of last year. Um, the White House is, seems to be a constant target. Um, what kind of things are keeping you up at night in the cybersecurity world and uh, are there any technological or policy ways we can combat that? So again, I think I think t technology evolves at such a rate that it it outpaces legislation, policy, law enforcement techniques. Uh, I just think that we need to uh, take a holistic approach to this. Uh, that law enforcement uh, needs to engage the policymaker, but also the technologist, to make sure that we are all speaking. Uh, you know, not past each other, but speaking so that we all understand at the end of the day, we want a secure, safe uh, internet uh, so that progress and commerce can go forward. So what keeps me up at night, uh, there's no shortage of malicious threat actors that are out there. Um, and I think that, uh, at least from the Secret Service perspective, we are concerned about the highly skilled, highly motivated uh, cyber criminal that is offshore, uh, and sometimes operates from countries that are less than cooperative. Mm -hmm. uh, so it makes it a challenge, uh, but we have excellent cooperation with um, our law enforcement partners overseas, and uh, we are very patient. Uh, it often takes many years to put these investigations together and actually make an apprehension, um, but we are very patient. We, we tend to not uh, just indict somebody just for the sense of 
posting a wanted poster. We actually put people in jail. So uh, that's a challenge. Uh, I worry about the, uh, the costs uh, that the cyber criminals can do. And I think that's something that we're all focused on, um, policymakers, uh, legislators, and law enforcement. So it's just a matter of trying to work uh, together to ensure that law enforcement has the, the appropriate tools to be able to conduct these investigations, especially when they go overseas. Okay, sure. Um, finally, uh, let's bring it back to the cyber workforce. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the skills gap within the cyber workforce and what federal government can do to kind of bridge that. Um, what kind of trends are you seeing out there right now, and um, are you confident in the ability for that to for us to stay resilient with our cyber uh, defense so it is a challenge uh, talent retention uh, is a challenge the mm -hmm. private sector um, is 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 very attractive uh, to folks uh, and I think if uh, faced with a choice of going into government service or going to the private sector I think uh, the economics uh, really dictate that people pursue a private sector career uh, there there is a bit of a uh, of a bell curve right now, uh, but I think eventually the ship will right itself as we get more um, younger uh, a younger generation into the workforce to include the federal workforce, yeah. uh, and uh, make it so that uh, government is at least competitive uh, with private sector. Uh, now we may not uh, get there where uh, someone's going to go work for uh, Homeland Security over Google. Uh, but at least there's got to be something in there, some advantage, and that's where we have to uh, look to um, our leadership within not only DHS but uh, across the whole uh, executive branch to say what, how can we attract the best and the brightest to come work and address the cyber issue. Um, and I think that uh, we're going to always have this, this retention issue, uh, but I think once we figure out how we can appeal to a younger generation uh, make sure that they're happy with where they're working uh, and keep them happy, then hopefully they'll, they'll want to stay. Sure. Well, Ron, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today, um, and I hope you have a good uh, rest of your conference. Great. Thanks, Billy. Uh, thanks for watching FedScoop TV. I'm Billy Mitchell.